everybody, it's Alex slash Mushu. I'm back with some more updates for Broadcast GG. So as we now move on to this next stage to where we're actually working on the tool, by we, I mean me and whoever wants to help, maybe that's you. That's what this is for. I wanted to make a video that shows at a high level how the workflow works because we have the tool, we have the file structure, we have the installer and some decisions that need to be made to move into new games. And you will see why. So at a high level first, how this works is, <laughs> okay, we'll just get into it. There's a, I, I realize now from like kind of a, from a, from a big picture to small picture, I didn't quite put it in that way. But what I want y'all to think about is when you are making a broadcast, there's lots of ways to do it. But what you need is you need video, you need audio, you need to smush it all together. So video meaning images, any visuals, so images, text, videos, moving things, whatever it happens to be. So the way to do it is a very popular way is to use OBS Studio or Open Broadcast Studio. Is OBS Studio? Anyways, OBS and Studio. Okay, anyways, uh, the way it works is almost like it's live Photoshop. So you have these different layers, right? Where you have, uh, you can combine visual layers and then you smush together all the audio, and that's how you make a stream, that's how you make a broadcast, whether you're doing esports or not. You're smushing together all the moving stuff and all the audio. So, specifically with this tool, the important thing to know is that there is a layer that is the captured video from the gameplay, and then there is an overlay that has the information you wanna add on to, onto it. So, uh, capturing the gameplay, that's something you can do whether you're just streaming to Discord or whatever it happens to be. But then the overlay is where the complication comes into play, is how do you control all that information that makes all these different scenes, right? So you can have something like a map scene. You need to have all this information. How do you put in all the numbers? How do you put in all the text? This is what the tool helps us do. But I want to make sure that we are all on the same page and that people, even if you're completely new to all of this stuff, um, is that you can see how there is a, so I'm realizing here that Windows not quite capturing everything. Um, so yeah, you have the capture gameplay in the background and then you have this overlay, which we are using uh, a web-based uh, solution. So we're running like a web page locally and it's transparent, right? It doesn't have this dark overlay. I'm just putting that for visuals, but it has information and detail and images and animations and all these things that lives in a layer that's on top of the video. So OBS Studio is something other people work on, and uh, but the tool that Broadcast GG uses sits on top of OBS and builds into OBS. So if you wanna know more about the installer and the uh, how to actually use the tool, that's in another video. I can put it in the link down below, but let's go ahead and move on from the beginning. Three minutes and not too bad. All right, cool. So from a high level, We'll zoom out a little bit. We have our scoreboard tool. The scoreboard tool writes information to the local files, text files, images, videos, web code. And then after you have these local files, you then, we run a local web server, which basically says, cool, I am running a website, which all you need to know about for this website is just, it's a way to present images and files and text all together. Uh, visually, this is strictly the visuals, um, combining everything based on these images and videos and web code and text so that we can make a visual. That's this layer up here, this transparent overlay. So the workflow that I'm gonna talk about is all about creating just the overlay portion of it uh, and, and, and why that's kind of important. And then separately, Within OBS Studio and how we have in the installer, <clears throat> we have these different scenes that are sets up. They're set up. Again, picture the, all of these as just layers, just live Photoshop happening, um, where there is, say, for example, this overlay with all this information. Everything you see in the center here is that overlay. The background is actually separate. That's a video that's in OBS that we provide, and then these, the the web, the overlay itself just combines all of those visuals into this one layer. And then we're taking that overlay layer and smashing it on top of a video in the background. So this is this particular scene is just like when you're in game. You have the background, then you have some overlay over the over the front of it. 
Um, same thing here. We have this overlay, which shows the different heroes and whatnot, and the names. Cool. So uh, yeah, and, and here's what OBS actually looks like if you haven't used it before. Uh, so you have these different sources here. These, these are the layers I'm talking about right here. So you have collections of different scenes, which are just different like collections of layers. And within one scene, so for example, map pool here, we have the uh, transition HTML, which is like the animation that happens when we change to the scene. We have the HTML map screen, which is the overlay itself that we're seeing. Waves is actually the background video and local music is just something we have locally. We'll, we won't get too much into that, but these are the layers I'm talking about. Um, we're primarily talking about the visuals today. So from a high level, again, we have a local tool that controls the local files. So this tool runs in your Windows machine. Once you control those files and change these files, the web server says, oh, we're waving here. The web server says, oh, cool. I'm looking at everything that you're changing. And now I'm going to put those changes into this layer here. And that OBS then says, okay, cool. Now I can see the web page you're running and all the information there. I'll put it into my broadcast. Uh, my comp compilation, and then you have these multiple scenes. Um, <laughs> these, these, wait, hold on. This is, this is not a map set scenes. This is, this is the uh, uh, team screen, and then this is the in game scene. In game, cool. So that is pretty much it. We can go into more detail though, uh, because as we're thinking about expanding to other games the one some of the challenges are uh and for for people that are going to start hopping and working on this is to understand like uh you need to understand like how it's all laid out right so this this is the flow that we just went through but in terms of editing the scoreboard tool itself um changing how we include files for other games this is where um diving into more detail will be helpful so i want to move into valorant next the one thing that's interesting is built into the scoreboard tool now, we actually have default, you can see these different things here, the heroes, the role, the maps, changing all of those things, we have that embedded into the tool right now for Overwatch. And that's where if to maintain is actually a little bit difficult to do. Like you have to go into the app, uh, uh, yeah, you have to edit the C-sharp application and you have to add in these assets. It doesn't take too long, but it's a little annoying to, to change out. For example, uh, if you have a new update, do we then have to reinstall all the files over again and then you lose all this information? That's part of the, the, the reason why I'm thinking about we should probably move away from having these things be default. <clears throat> and what I'm talking about is uh, in the tool itself, we got some more nitty gritty details here. Uh, so in the broadcast folder, which when you install, when you use our installer, we are doing a couple things. We are setting up a file structure. So we're dropping in this broadcast folder somewhere on your computer. And in the broadcast folder sits a bunch of things. You have a scoreboard folder. You have the HTML folder. You have the Nginx controller uh, uh, folder. Controller, man, it's been a long day. And video folder, amongst some other things. But... Uh, I think just for the purposes of this video and what I need to educate people on, these are the main things to to know about. Uh, within the scoreboard folder is the actual scoreboard tool itself. So the important thing here to know is that when we have the drop down menu on the tool, for example, up here, where is it? All of these drop downs, being able to actually control these things, so it says like Reaper, Doomfist, Sigma. DPS tank support, and even the maps, to control that, the tool looks into a folder locally. So that's this one here. So this is really the big key area of focus. As you can see here, for example, this is the hero folder. Uh, we have the Anna.hero and then the, or Anna.hero and Anna, which is, this is the image right here. And then this is like a dot hero folder. So when the tool looks in the folder, 
it needs to see two things. It needs to see the, the image and then the associated dot hero folder, uh, file rather. So with those two together, now it's able to say, oh, cool. Now you can select it from the dropdown. So when we're creating something for Valorant, the main thing, the only thing we need to really change here is the contents of this folder. So as long as this is, these both are present, then we're good to go. You can actually drag and drop this into any tool. Like uh, say for example, we provided the a folder with a new hero, a new agent in Valorant, and just drop it into this folder. It's a little more manual from a from like a user perspective, but pretty much everyone who's using this tool is technical, right? We know computers. So that's what I think is the best way because otherwise every time this new agent, like for example, in Valorant, they just dropped a new agent. I don't have to remake a new scoreboard exe with the default in there and then send it out to everybody. I can just say, hey, here's the update, drop this. You can just drop the new hero or the new agent into the hero folder. So I think that's where we're gonna go with this. So in order to get Valorant live and ready to go, what I want us to do first is actually just get the assets and get all these files here for the different game types, heroes, maps, and roles. So that way people can just drop it in. I think we'll just start with the same installer and then people can drop in the new files. Um, that's something where, yeah, that, that, that's what I'm, I'm still thinking through some of those things, but in any case, I'm gonna make this Figma um, link accessible to everybody so you can scroll through and check it out. I have a lot of details here. Like I separate out in the scoreboard, there's different kinds of folders and, and things, not super important for me to go through right now because the next step is how do we uh, make the easiest Valorant version quickly. Uh, so I'll have more details on that. I'm gonna create some cards for like what are the tasks that I see, but uh, feel free to look through this, ask me any questions, but the yeah, next step, make something for Valorant that can be installed really easily. Um, so yeah, check that out. I will be managing the project in GitHub uh, so we'll start with that. Cool. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you later.